I remember John Lieber and the Evil. I mean, and uh, Dippy, they called him Dippy, the bass player. But John, man, he was like something else on stage. He just had this thing where he was like kind of manic, you know. And he was just manic. And, and, and the Evil, I, I heard that they later got a new manager and had to wear suits, which, which, which totally makes no sense. The Evil were not the kind of band that wore suits, but I remember them. And the Mod Beats, now the Mod Beats, they were, uh, they were quite big. Oh, in the early days, with the morticians, when I joined them, they had a hearse. It was black, it was old, it was like the Munsters. It was, you know, big double wheel wells, like right from the Al Capone. Then we had plenty of room. And we used to dress in tuxedos on stage. We had the, we, we looked like morticians. Uh, somebody might have said something like, we look like morticians, and then from that, we grew all kinds of ideas. So I think it just sort of formed itself. On some occasions, we had some headstones up on the stage, and uh, a couple of times we tried to use some dry ice to get the, you know. Where'd you guys get the coffin? Believe it or not, that was just made out of cardboard. <laughs> We were looking more possibly impressive than we were. It just seemed to hang on forever. Even today I've talked to people and say, oh, I remember you, you were with the morticians. Uh, there was always bands starting and uh, we thought, well, yeah, we could go out and play and have some fun and we'll give it a shot. That was the time of the band. Some of them did really well and then all of a sudden just dropped out of sight, same as we did. When we started playing at the, the roller rink, there was a ready-built crowd and then when we appeared in live music, they liked the kind of music. It didn't matter how well we did it. If we were there and it was something new. It really didn't matter who was playing. They do just the same. It was easy music. You know, three chords, you could play most songs. Didn't get too involved. We had a fan club that established itself. We didn't make it, we didn't ask for it, but some girls started a fan club for the morticians and they were always there and they were great fans and they, you know, they just kept us coming back. Mod Beats had the fan base, they had the right idea, they had the proper guys, they sold I don't know how many thousands of copies of their first album. They had to stick it out, and I told you, that's not easy to do. Okay, there's a lot of things to pull you out of a band. And unfortunately, when they were at their time, they had strings pulling the band all kinds of ways and it separated. Fraser was a real showman. You know, he danced and he did all this stuff and great outfits and good voice. I think he was what other groups tried to emulate, but they never quite came across. Of course, everybody was still in high school. All of a sudden, here we were, Mod Beats in the paper all the time. We thought it was great. Uh, we put on more of a show than other bands. Not just myself, but everybody else would fall into creating some sort of an exciting thing to watch. Whenever you break down the barriers between the stage and the audience, you're no longer um, a commodity or something that people want to go see. You're part of the audience. If you become accessible to your audience, then the mystique has disappeared, it's gone. There was no way we were allowed to mingle in between sets with the audience. Forebode, we stayed in addressing them. You do have to have a little bit, I think class is important. This, and I this, think we this was that. before the, the bad boy image. Or but still the bad boy image is a contrived thing. There is bad boy and, and stupidity. <laughs> you get up in the morning Got the same old crown People move around you, yeah Going to surround you, yeah They've got a dance The evil guys wanted me in the band because I had equipment. I had a guitar and I had an amplifier and a microphone, so I think they really wanted me in the band. Yeah, I don't think it was my abilities, I think it was the equipment. I like the Evil, I love watching them because they were a um, very exciting band. They could really learn the parts, not like being young and, and, and playing a couple of the chords and you could work your way through it, but they actually had the technique, they played it the way the bands played it and say so you, you kind of just were miffed and went, oh my god, these guys can really play. Well, Ed was dippy, yeah, he was, he was cool. Jimmy, Jimmy was Jimmy and Denny Turbin, like, he, Denny was an artist, he was a business person, great guy. Terry Walsh. Nobody can touch him on guitar. Nobody will ever touch him. I just think the world of him, great guitar player. Two of my favorite guitar players were Terry Welsh and Mark Campbell. Terry Walsh, really good, of course. Oh, there was so many. Terry Walsh was a heck of a musician. Terry Welsh, I think, ended up being a phenomenal guitar player. I'm, I'm happy that uh, something, some kind of influence 
not a flashy kind of guitar player, I don't think. You know, he wasn't playing behind his head and that kind of thing, but he was very good. Well, I always thought, as, as a lead player, I always thought uh, Terry Walsh was you know, technically very, very good. Uh, guitar players, I mean, Mark Campbell and Terry Walsh. And we would sit and watch Terry Walsh just play and just awe ah, because he was so good. Terry Walsh, you can't get a better guitarist. But, you know, he, he's top notch. I've always had a love for music, and that's why I still do it. I think if there was an Agra sound, the evil had it because of the fact that we did write a lot of material. It was, it was more British sounding than, say, um, Toronto and Hamilton had more of an, the rhythm and blues, uh, uh, the R&B stuff. A little bit, little bit too short hair for us mods. <laughs> they sang a song, a bop a bop and they said the word, master. I know a girl, her name is Mary Bates. His brother's name is Master Bates. And as soon as Ron Metcalf heard that, the curtains went shh. Ron closed the curtains. He said that was indecent, and they were banned. And it caused a big stir in the city because everybody knew why we got banned. We were evil. So they started playing the roller rink. Well, the kids wanted them back to the castle. So Ron Metcalf had to give in because they brought the crowds. The evil brought the crowds. Maybe the whole scheme was a scheme from, in Ron's eyes, kicking us out. Who knows? But it worked. Oh, yeah, evil, which turned into rainy fields and that. And they were, uh, I always thought they were really good. I was surprised when, the, I thought once they went to Toronto, and I think they're playing uh, the Night Owl in Yorkville. I thought for sure they were going to do something. But it's another one of those Canadian bands that just disappear, you know. You never hear from them again. Children in love, just because we're young. So we wear. The kid's very first job was at Morgan's Point. This guy comes up and he tells us, you have to play really loud and fast in here because this place, when they start dancing, it's just a blur. So he gets us all worked up. I think eight people showed up. A year later, we were playing for about 12,000 people at a street dance on the back of a flatbed truck, so things do change. I, I just wanted to play in a band. And Mark Campbell and myself started a band called The Kids. And we were playing Beatles stuff and the Hollies and all that stuff. We used to practice six days a week. Yeah, Glad and I put that together. We weren't good enough to play at the castle. So we played at the roller rink for $50 a night. That's all Jack paid, and we were glad to have it. So we played there about 37 times that summer. Did Monkeys, Songs by the Monkeys, Songs by the Beatles, Songs by the Yardbirds, Songs by the Mod Beats. We sort of followed the Mod Beats, tried to copy everything they did for the first six months, and then we started to get away from that. We had more harmonies, and then we started playing louder and louder. The Who influence. By the time I joined them, it wasn't so much the old Everly Brothers and Hollies and all that kind of stuff. It was a lot more psychedelic. I mean, we had the liquid light show and the strobe lights and the black lights, and we had two guys traveling with us. One guy mainly a roadie and the other guy mainly a light guy. Roy Dickinson, our singer, he moved around a lot. He was very good-looking, chick magnet. It was like kind of like being a little rock star back in those days, so the turnouts were always good. Yeah, we always had a good time. We more or less came up with the idea, well, why don't we try two drummers? Everybody was just, wow, what's this all about? The roller rink and all that, it was just jammed in there, and then here we are up there playing with the two drummers. It was full, very full, very drummy, but in the groove. It was, uh, it was really something. It was neat. We worked with Image. Through Image, we went through uh, another agency in, in Ottawa, uh, Leonard Alexander. And the only bands he handled were the Staccatos and the Kids. Five-man electrical band, that's right. And uh, they, they were the only two bands in Canada, I think, that had two drummers. <laughs> Both of us had two drummers. So it's funny how that worked out. I played lead, and we had four rhythm players. And we decided, okay, let's get a bass player. So John volunteered, and I don't know how that I happened. I bought a bass, I don't know. Drummers were tough to find. Wipeout was the only instrumental we did. Yeah. <laughs> for Gene. <laughs> he was a drummer, so Gene would do it. Let him kill himself for 10 minutes yeah. on stage, and we'd go and have a pop or two. And they loved it. Yeah, yeah, Gene was really yeah. good. He was a great drummer. Yeah. Well, we were kind of the house band at the roller rink with Jack Johnson. Friday um, nights. Friday nights, or some point on the weekend. That was jammed. Jammed, because we would go on at 10 30. Yeah. And then the roller skating would stop, and we would play in the roller rink area. On a stage that jutted out That's over. Right. And we played till one. And then we played upstairs sometimes as well. I just can't yeah, remember was it what Club was going 21, on. Club 21, I think, very smoky. And the castle was full also. It was more intimate, I guess. Uh, and proper stage. The yeah, and better lights, sound. <laughs> everything. Well, it was, it was fun playing there. 
hair was a huge deal in those days. We would get kicked out of restaurants because not because our hair was down to our shoulders, just because our hair was like just shorter than mine is right now, if you can imagine that. Some restaurants we weren't served in. It's kind of funny when you think about it. Uh, constantly, you know, get a haircut, you know, you bum, that kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. I'm not going to mention the school's name, but the initials are DM. And when I went there, the teachers told me, the principal told me, comb your hair back because I combed it back like the Beatles. And I said, no, and I got kicked out for two weeks. We were getting hassled because we had long hair. The guy out front was calling us names. <laughs> and I was singing, and I went like that, and I hit the guy right in the forehead, and it knocked him out. And I saw Garnet carry the body. <laughs> yeah, and there was people walking around with knives in their back pocket. Oh, Delhi, yeah. We used to come back late at night every night. Same cop would pull us over. We'd get out of the car, little search, flashlight down the pants, making sure we weren't smuggling drugs. And by the third or fourth night, we, we almost just said hi. We knew the guy and said, yep, it's us coming from the gig. We got out and did it every night. So we had run-ins like that. Because at the time, you know, we had long hair, and still not everyone had long hair. But uh, Years ago, when you went to A&W, they gave you little salt containers in like a bubble pack. And I remember yes, we were in yes. Rick's 64 Galaxy 5. 500 convertible, convertible yeah. and um, days ago we were at the NW and we just threw these salt things across the top and of course here we are at three in the morning stopping at the castle so guess who shows up and you know we all had long hair and he says uh, and what's this we said it's salt he said do you mind if I uh, take this sure so I'll get all the names he says and it's salt is it boys <laughs> yeah it's salt <laughs> <laughs> So I, uh, I imagine what uh, went on when he went back to the police station. <laughs> Look what I got. I got their names. I suffered discrimination because of my name. 30 years ago, they changed my name because Piccarillo was too hard to pronounce. And they called me Purcell. I think that Al Piccarillo would have been fine then, and I stick with Al Piccarillo now. Rumors had it that this is the new mecca of the world for music, so we said, let's go there. And we bought all this gear from a band that was just breaking up called The Kids. Yeah. It seemed to be very easy to get musicians over here. And I mean, really good musicians. We went through a lot of drummers. Henry was only about 15 at the time, and we taught him all the, all the songs, and he fitted in just wonderful. A lot of the places we played, we'd have to get shades on him because he was so young. Once at the back door, the cops came in and oh, we believe one of the members in the band is underage. Well, we said no, actually three of the members of the band are underage. But we, we kept him going, we used to put a moustache on him. Painted on him, yeah. We did, we painted and put a hat on him, a shades on him and put, turn down the lights on the back and just play in the back and we, we did that for a while. That happened over in uh, the Franklin. Remember yeah. that night with the big, somebody the big had a... fight? And we were playing, and there's a big fight, and the cops came in, and there's a, big, yeah. a huge fight started in the Franklin. And then they came in, and we hear that the drummer's under it second time, so somebody had it in for us. Now don't worry about the drummer, break up the fight. There's a band, the movement, I used to screw them around a little bit. I was never really in on most of the pranks. These guys were all in St. Catharines when I was here. You know, I didn't have a car or anything, so. All we were doing, uh, if you're going to San Francisco, that one, if you're going to San Francisco, we're doing that one. A lot of Hendrix, and I was just learning how to do vibrato on the guitar. Bob Sterner was showing me how to do that because he was a little ahead of me on that department. Jimi Hendrix changed everything with that first album. You had to learn how to play guitar all over again. A lot of guys just stopped playing after that. There is a band called Pinkerton's Assorted Colors. They like the sound of it. In fact, you know, we want something like that. How about if we just leave out Assorted? So we kind of voted on names, and that was the name that got voted in, and I was outvoted on uh, the choice of it. It's almost like things were done far more professionally. When I was in high school, we had, an, we had a manager. We had an agent, you know, a recognized legitimate agent and public relations guys. We went down to Michigan and signed a contract, and we did a 45, and I believe WKBW Radio may have played it once or twice. I actually see how I played it more than once or twice, but I, to this day, I don't know why. I always liked Luch. Everybody's trying to get him to eat all the time. We're on the road, and he would, come on, have something, have something to eat. Yeah, I think I will this time, and then it never fail, a cup of, cup of coffee and a cigarette, you know. I think it was Greg who said, hey, let's put a band together and let's be in the variety show. So that's, that's how the Brokes, that was the very first band I ever sang with. That Wally Tomchuk was on the bass. Oh yeah, Yoke, Jim Yogolini with the hollow body Gibson. We would have a battle of band against the kids the odd time, and uh, the kids were the favorite local, right? 
But we didn't like that kind of music, so we got more into, before they were known, Steppenwolf. We used to do some Steppenwolf. We did a lot of Steppenwolf. That would give you sort of the general flavor. 